Hello and welcome back to QVR. The last time I was trying to make the parquet floor, but I stopped because I had this weird chest bug. I hope it is fixed now so that I can continue with crafting my... I can take some wood with me can continue to craft my cat. I had to interrupt my own sentences because I just remembered that I could take any wood that I have here with me. Okay. Another week passed. It's over a year since I was in Japan the last time. And I can't even remember what I was building last year. Hmm. I know what I did in my German Let's Play world. I was building on my pagoda. I'm not even sure if I showed you this. Uh, I don't think so. I can show you right now. I'm pretty sure, or pretty sure, I'm pretty confident in my pagoda and really sh proud of it. That's what I was searching for. There's a torch. Not the settings, but here. Copy paste this one. I placed it above the ground that is on purpose. So let's see, where's the entrance? <laughs> huh? Oh, of course, the entrance is here. So. so there's the entrance is just a bit different other than this every side looks almost the same let's go on this side where we have the sun in our back so this is my little pagoda that I made. I used a picture that I took in 2019 from a pagoda in Asakusa in Tokyo. Usually it's all the same level, but I decided to make my five-story pagoda smaller with each level. And yeah, I just took a picture and I used this picture as a reference and then I just made all of this. <laughs> I'm sorry. The whole thing took me... Uh, maybe five to six hours. Yeah, six hours would be like roughly 10 episodes. I think that's a good estimate. Maybe I could just add some light sources here. I do have those lanterns. Oh, this also looks pretty nice. So I could maybe add some lanterns on the edges here like here on this one so extend this uh, bah, bah, bah. extend this and then put a lantern here as a lampion so up here we have 
bit more gold. This is actually all gold blocks. This is all gold. Gold! Gold! <laughs> it is pretty tall. This is probably my tallest building in my German world. Not even tall enough to outrank my unfinished Evangelion. But in my German world, this is the tallest one. And I think it looks pretty nice. If you look at it from here, see. Okay, there are some blocks that need to be removed. I was leaning forward and almost fell over. <laughs> So yeah, that's my pagoda, pagoda, whatever you want to pronounce it. You can tell me in the comments what you think of it. So. Just wanted to show you. So yeah. I'm not sure what I did last year in this world. It would be around 56 to 51 episodes ago. Ah. I really have no idea. That's strange. Huh. Was I maybe working on my shrine? No, I think the shrine was done already. Okay. no idea how I did the bug last time. I just know that I placed those in front of here. But it doesn't do anything. In here. Hmm, maybe the bug could be related to the floating block. At least it's the same rarity. <laughs> so maybe when I grab this and put it here, it would have generated a floating block. That's the only thing that I could think of that would make somewhat sense. Next week it's already my birthday again. That means in two years I will be in Japan again. <laughs> come here. So. This week was really chaotic at work. At home it was pretty nice. Right now I'm still waiting for a sale for Star Ocean 4 and Star Ocean 2, but the Star Ocean 2 remake. I played the demo of Star Ocean 2 and it's really nice. 
usually those 2D HD remakes can be a bit strange. When I saw the first um, pictures of Octopath Traveler, I didn't like how it looked. I mean, high definition backgrounds and really low polygon 2D sprites in the ground. It's. Mm, ah. But it did a really good job in uh, so the game actually, so it's not really that bad. It's a bit, although it looks a bit better if you see it on a screen than playing it yourself. But um, Star Ocean 2 was a fantastic and really great game. I talked about this in the past already. It was really a nice game. It was the second game that I played. Ah, just let me think, let me think, was it really? I think Star Ocean 1 was the second one back on Super Nintendo. The first one was Star Ocean 3. Then pretty close to it was 1, 2 or 2, 1. I think it was 1 first and then at some point 2. Because you couldn't get the PlayStation 1 version of Star Ocean 2. So I had to wait till they made the PlayStation Portable game. Then I brought it for my PlayStation Portable. PlayStation Portable was a good device. PlayStation Vita as well. A lot of people said that it was actually dead on arrival, but believe me, it was a really fantastic device. I played a lot of games on my PlayStation Vita. For example, Persona 4 Golden. I mean, it's Persona. <laughs> and... Also, Gravity Rush. Gravity Rush on PlayStation Vita. It was so innovative. You had to use your gyro, 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 gyro sensor and tilt your Vita so that you can actually decide in which way you want to fall or in which direction you want to fall. Later on, they changed it to the right analog stick. But in Gravity Rush 1 on Vita, it was really awesome. So you were playing and then you could aim by looking around with your Vita. That was really cool. Had a nice um, touchpad on the back. Not many games used it. You could remap some buttons to it if you wanted to. Similar to the... Um, L4 and 5 button on the Steam Deck. It was really nice to have those touch pads on the back. Also a really nice game was... Oh, what was the name? It was as... Was it a Souls-like? Mm, it was more like a Monster Hound or... Probably. In this game, I can just describe it, I can't think of the name now. You could use magic, but every magic had its price. So usually you had to pay the price by offering something. For example, you could shoot the tips of your fingers as a bone cannon, but you had to sacrifice the first part of your fingers. Then they were gone. Or there were actually bosses who used too much of their powers and sacrificed most of their bodies for their creed. So one guy actually yeah, made himself into a huge pile of gold coins. And you could actually sacrifice defeated enemies to 
fuel your magic or you could then absorb their magic and use them as fuel for the magic or you could just free them and that was really cool this is wall okay all right uh <laughs> I need more wood. I shouldn't have left the trees. This time I should have collected them all. Well, there are still plenty of trees here that need to be removed. This is going to get flooded at some point, so I need the space. So I can get the wood from here. Soul Sacrifice. The game was called Soul Sacrifice. Now I remembered. I also had the Japanese um, voice pack for it. And they actually changed the names of the antagonists. Because in the original Japanese, the antagonists were named after... The Knights of the Round Table, like Galahad and Lancelot, Arthur, Mordred, and of course Arthur and Mordred were really strong, so was Merlin. And yeah, you could only notice this in the Japanese, because in English they had some really strange fake names I don't know why I don't think anyone who plays this kind of game <laughs> would feel offended if some British heroes from fairy tales got used in a video game I mean we have fate grand order or fate in general where they just gender band King Arthur <laughs> And more to it. I haven't played FGO for over a year now. At some point I just was logging in every day just to get my daily login bonus. But I didn't play much. I tried some events but after five years for some reason i still enjoyed it but i couldn't find the time to do it anymore and right now i'm playing a video game or a smartphone game called idle tower or the tower Idle defense something something. It's not an idle game. <laughs> but I play it for two years now. Every now and then. It's like a tower defense. You have your tower in the middle of the screen. And from all sides enemies spawn and try to hit your tower. The tower does have some HP. And then you can develop more attack power, attack fire rage, something like this. It has a really steep grind level and yeah nowadays I run this game almost 20 hours a day. It's just running and simulating my turns that I have there. It is pretty addicting and yeah this might sound stupid but I'm getting a tablet just so that I can play it on a tablet and don't have to abuse my smartphone for it anymore. It is a really cheap tablet. But, 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 but. Um, this tablet actually supports stylus use, so I can use this as a drawing tablet for our Baltic phone sessions that we have every Monday and I must say our gothic phone sessions are the best thing ever 
We have so much fun. They are pure gold. <laughs> and the worst part is when I stream something, mostly Beat Saber, everyone who is in the Gothic phone team is watching my streams. And last stream, <laughs> I just made even more content for the next Gothic phone one. And if you're all interested in it, you can also join us. You don't have to join us every time, but if you want to experience some really nice fun time with us, maybe even in voice chat, you don't have to talk, you can just listen to us, then feel free to stop by. And if you don't know what Gothic phone is, like I didn't know, I mean, I knew it from some streamers, but I didn't care much. So Gothic Phone is a game application in Discord, in the Discord app, or I think also in the browser version. And in the first round, everyone is typing a word or a sentence. The next round, the sentences or words get shuffled. And then you have to draw a picture for the sentence that you got. Then the next person have to write a sentence or the word that you that he sees in your picture. Then the next one have to make a new picture of the words that the person saw who saw your picture and so on. And sometimes the topic can escalate really quickly. <laughs> and sometimes there actually is really nice stuff that makes for good artwork. I, for example, made two um, Discord server sticker from my Discord server. Just from the pictures that we drew. I just used them as my own because my Discord, my rules. <laughs> And now nah, it's really fun. It's every Monday at 8 p.m. Um, Central European time zone plus one. Or GTM plus one. And like I said, you could join the Discord just to listen to us crazy people. Or maybe even talk to us. It's really fun uh, and we laugh a lot. Some pictures are high quality, others are just art. <laughs> it's really fun. I'm really looking forward to it this, because this makes my Monday really nice and enjoyable. This is a really good start in the week. So two more. So this part of the palace is done. Now we just have to do it on this side as well. So that's how I made the ocean in our community world in the beginning. I made a lot of the water blocks and then I placed them one after the other, the other, or another, one after the other, yeah, one after the other. I need to try to speak more clearly, because last time someone told me that he couldn't understand me, because I don't speak that clearly, and my pronunciation is always bad. So yeah, I try to do better. I still remember that I really tried to be uh, understandable when I started. 
but at some point I just got comfortable. And that's when the laziness kicked in. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm running out of wood really fast. The fact that we only get four pocket doesn't help much. <laughs> But getting wood is not that hard. Boop, 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 boop. Uh. Mm. Ah, there it is. So. So yesterday I streamed Beat Saber and I managed to surpass Kiwi Human, a really good Beat Saber player from the United Kingdom. He is active in my um, streams and also part of the Gothic phone. And, and the first time we played, almost every topic came down to Kiwi is doing something. So yeah, but he's really good. He is like, I think top 1,500 in the world, where I am top 6,500 something. So there's a really big gap between our skills. I respect him a lot. He's a really awesome Beat Saber player. So yeah, but I surpassed him yesterday in a map. I didn't even think that I could surpass him, but I was like, ah, that's too far away from him. Then I watched to the score and I saw, oh, hmm, I bet him. Oh, ha, ha. That felt really good. <laughs> Beaming is a lot of fun. I still love to make Let's Plays. They are still the thing that I like a lot. But yeah, interacting with chat in live streams that is really fun. <laughs> I still remember how tiring it was when I started. And now I just can't wait to do the streams. Sometimes when I'm just <laughs> lazy, I still want to do a stream because it's also a bit more motivating because you have this live interactions with chat and usually it's always the same people so for me it's like i'm talking to my friends because i see you guys as my friends so that's why it's so much fun for me and i'm pretty sure that most of the time my chat also enjoys the time with me otherwise they wouldn't come back <laughs> Uh, ah, there. More wood is always good. The sun is a bit bright right now. Some people are praising the PlayStation 5 Pro when they play No Man's Sky. They say everything looks so nice. I want to play No Man's Sky as well again. But I don't have the time. Most of the time it's always the problem that I don't have the time. I still had plenty of wood left. So today is just crafting. But hey, when they built the palace back in the day, they also had to rely on their resources. So if they went out of wood, they had to make new pocket, for example. 
So I'm just experiencing what the people back then experienced as well when they made Castle Moritzburg. Or Palace Moritzburg. So today, a new version of Holo Cure released. Holo Cure is a fan game similar to Vampire Survivor, where you have a character that shoots its weapon all the time. You collect more weapon and it shoots or uses the weapons automatically. You just have to collect stuff and survive. Don't get hit by anything. It's the new kind of bullet hell game that we had back with the Toho project games. Toho games are on a really different level. I once played a bullet hell on PlayStation 3. I got it for free after the PlayStation Network incident in 2013. It, were, it were three different bullet hell games and they were really tough. That was really something to kill control of it. <laughs> Oops. So. Oh. So. Oh. Oh, man. oh, I'm getting too old for this. I was hunching over the whole time and that just got to my back. <sighs> Don't get old, guys. Stay young and healthy. But being old is no excuse. We have one worker at our workplace. He is 70 years old. He is far in retirement age. He retired when his normal retirement time came. And after six months, he came back to work because all this sitting at home was not really something for him. So he came back to work. He is really fit mentally. He can still walk around fine and do basic stuff. So we all really appreciate that he's there. He's the good soul of the company. That was Wednesday. I ordered a new winter jacket for him because he's always outside and when it gets cold, he don't have to freeze. So I brought him a new jacket and it arrived. The one at the parcel department opened it and she asked who's going to get this red winter jacket. And I couldn't remember his name. I talk about him almost every day or with him every day. I know his name, but in this moment, I totally forgot. I was like, nah, nah, what's his name? It's the good soul of the company. And she, ah, you mean this and this? And I was like, yeah, and he, he was like, yeah, I totally know who you mean when you say the good soul, because he is the good soul. <laughs> he is a really nice, he's like the perfect grandpa. He's nice. He does have his quirks like all the old people have. He likes to talk about stuff when he was young and stuff like this. He likes to help out the younger guys. Nothing bad. It's all really nice. And he listened to us and it's really nice to work with him. He was really sad when he heard that I'm going to quit. But he could also totally understand. Like everyone can. But yeah, he is really fit, even though he's old. Unlike me, who is old and unfit. 
I don't need to place anything here. I said that I'm going to make a wall here and then that's it. So my crystal should be empty pretty soon. Yeah, there it is. Because I was building way too much with it for now. <laughs> Today I watched a streamer playing Cube VR and suddenly the streamer said, Who are you? And I was like, I am me. And he was like, Ah, okay, then you can leave the stream because I don't want to talk to you. And I was like, Really? Just because I made a little joke? And he was like, No, I want to talk to my friend, so I will mute my microphone and that's it. And I was like, hmm, okay, strange, but okay. For me, it's actually strange that people stream, but don't talk to that chat at all. That's for me, that's really strange. Like I said earlier, for me, interacting with you guys is one of the biggest joys that live streaming has. So not doing the only good thing livestream has to offer is just strange. I know there are people who enjoy just watching someone play without any disturbing comments. That's legit. It's just not for me. Especially now that I am a streamer myself. Now I actually want to have interactions with the streamer or as a streamer with my chat. I don't know why. I know it's really strange and maybe I'm just stupid. But I think it's just that I want to press my agenda to everyone else as well. Because for me streaming means interacting with your chat. Because that's why I have my community live. And I'm pretty sure that my life and my Let's Play audience are separate things. There are people who are on both sides, that's for sure. Today we are rapid again. But there are also people who are always in my chat, in my live streams. And I'm not sure if they are in my Let's Plays. And there are a lot of more people in my Let's Plays than there are in my live streams. <laughs> and that's for sure. Sometimes I have like five people watching. Sometimes maybe ten. But my Let's Plays usually get... Okay, good question. How many views do my videos get nowadays? Uh, <laughs> I think 25. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't check over the last couple of months. Usually, I always checked. I was like, hmm, what is my current viewer count? But lately, maybe because of all of the stress from IRL. But lately, I don't care much about how good my videos do because it doesn't change the fact if I'm good or not. I still look at some streams that I start to see if I should make a live stream with it or not. 
and if my live streams don't get any uh, views later on then I know okay the topic is not that interesting so I don't have to use my very limited time if you have a full-time job doing good YouTube content can be a bit of an issue So I have to manage this little time that I have and usually it's just more fun per time minute spent in a live chat than in a let's play. But I also like my let's plays and <laughs> I just wish the day would have like 30 hours so that I could do it. <laughs> yes, sorry for mentioning it, but then I could do a lot more stuff i have so many vr games to play so many stuff that i want to live stream oh. maybe someday well then that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching till next time and please stay healthy bye bye bye